No, Jamie, perfect. Thanks for no coming out tonight. No? Thanks for that. Uh, it was a bit of fun and. Uh, it was, yeah. yeah. Good got workout. Up, got up a sweat. Yeah. <laughs> That's got, the got the heart rate up. So, I always open with the same question. Yeah. Should pineapple be on a pizza? I, I'm not a pizza man. No. So, uh, sure, he's ripped. He doesn't eat pizza. Uh, <laughs> on a burger? Uh, huh? On a burger? On a Jeez, no. 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 Meat and fruit. No, I shouldn't. No, mix. I shouldn't mix. No. Yeah, no. curry. No, not a curry man either. Jesus, Dave, what do you eat? <laughs> protein chips. <laughs> I wasn't going to ask this question, but I'm very proud of it. Right. Is it true you used to calibrate airport metal detectors because you're retired to steel? Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two knock, is this? <laughs> no, we get to the real stuff now. Uh, so, look at again, it's great that you're, you're willing to you know, put yourself up front oh, yeah. here and uh, answer a few questions for us. And you're obviously a, a big persona within the club and lads do uh, do take heed of what you say so a couple of kind of fun questions nothing too crazy pretty much routines or superstitions do you have any yeah i'd have routines not 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 uh, superstitions no i'd have routines yeah right okay championship games and yeah i would definitely uh okay. sleep if it's uh if it's an evening game i, I always try and get five ten minute nap during the day Brilliant. yeah i just think it's wonderful like are you talking to any dietitian or anyone that they always tell you Sleep if you, if it's a oh, if it's past five o'clock four o'clock game. If I'm up at seven, I always try and get maybe ten fifteen minute nap. Same food. I eat the same dinner before every game. So if the game is on at one o'clock or six o'clock, I still eat the same dinner. Yeah. You know so. You know, it, you know time wise and. Time wise, yes. Yeah. So if the game's on at one, I get yeah. up earlier. If the game's yeah. on at six. You know, so I'm still getting my. Yeah. Calories in with the games at one or six, I'm still getting my food into me. Yeah, that's great with the nap because six o'clock games and Sunday evening games, it's a nightmare. Well, especially yeah, if you're up at seven, you know, you, you know, especially a lot of underage, their games are in evenings. School all day, you're up at eight, you go to school all day, or if you're running around, and then you're expected to perform at your best at seven, half seven, in the evening. That's normally time when you're getting tired and you're up on the feet up. Yeah. So that ten, five minute nap, just also set your alarm. Close your eyes, just tune out. Oh, that's good advice. It's, 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 it's uh, good energy. That's, that's really good. Uh, who's your sporting icon? I wouldn't, I wouldn't have. I'm not into yeah. icons. I might look at someone and admire someone, but I wouldn't, there's not one person I'd look at and go, you know, yeah. that's, that's my icon, that's someone I'd look up to. Just don't, it's just, I don't know why, just, I don't know. I, like, sporting wise, I'd look at people who are quite professionally, but keep to themselves, you know. Like Casey Taylor, you don't hear much about her. Yeah. You know, people like that who, who are quite famous, but you don't see them in the papers, you only see them for their achievements, you know. Get on with it. Get on with it, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's good. Uh, okay, K at all on Nimrod is fair, is Nimrod to an eye. I was Ken for, I wish you Lauder, no Lewis, no Clickus. You know, who's the best to be Yeah, um, there's a good few, like, but I think about it on his day when he was injury free. Yeah. Like, I think Mike Meehan was just. Just like, yeah. you know, think of what he'd done with Jarrett's Golden 21s. You know, if you watch back the Curry game in 2008, I got it. the semi final. Unbelievable. Like, the expedition he did that night. Yeah. Like, unfortunately, his ankle had been injuries, but if that lad wasn't injured, like, we would be talking about him for years like yeah. you know he's just any young lad watching I know he's he's out there as teacher and they might know much but like that lad when he was on his day he was unmarkable on, he had everything didn't he power yeah. speed the way he handled himself like he just he was just you wouldn't think anything of him like yeah. but he just he just naturally like yeah. power and speed everything and would you have marked him or just kind of been on uh, I did I marked him once actually in 10 I didn't search him but I was put back on him <laughs> and uh just like I remember pushing them out one stage, I would pass the 45, and you know, I was doing, I was doing really good at pushing them out, pushing, and he just got that yard and about 45, 50 yards just over the bar. Class. And literally, one of the lads were running back past him, like, I can't do nothing there. Like, he was just. Hats off. When, when he had it, like, he was on, it was remarkable. Uh, do you remember him? Class. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose one bit of advice you could just impart on the junior, like what, what we typically have here is 
people between 13 and 17 coming through and really looking to the future of the club and being the future of the club. Mm. If you could just impart one bit of nugget, one little thing they could take away tonight, what would you say to them? Just, just enjoy football, like, and, you know, just, that's, like, you really have to enjoy football and enjoy every training session. Try to make every training session and just really enjoy it. But don't, don't make your life all about football. Don't let football define you as a person. Yeah. And I've done that for a long time. You know, football was my only thing. You're never going to be happy because you're never going to win. Like, only one team can win every year. Yeah. So just really enjoy football. You're so lucky to be able to play football because there's so many kids that can't play football. Yeah. They're just, you know, they don't have the ability or, you know, so you have the ability to go out and run around and just enjoy, enjoy yeah. it while you have it. And we had the great camaraderie as well and teammates. Oh, and team, like, yeah. It's like, you know, I have kids myself and even if they have no interest in sports, I will be trying to get them to some sort of team sport. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So it's, it's good, it's good focus to have. Um, and a few of these recorded, so what I might do is when we record this and play it back in the future, I can show it on the end, but what's your, what are your favourite moments in Tomb Stars jersey? I might have a few of them that I can throw in the back. Um, Yeah, I thought about this, like, but it's it's a strange one because when I look back, I always look back at the games, you know, the games we've lost, county finals we've lost, semi finals. Um, like, I think for me, it's just like every day I get to wear the jersey. There's not one, there's not one time I look back and go, "Oh, that's my favorite." Yeah. That's my favorite time I, I wore the jersey. Yeah. I think if we won a county final, that would be my favorite time. Yes. But you know, until we've won one, then. You know, I think it's for me every time we get to wear it in championship. You know, running out, yeah. being with the lads. You know, like it's just like the team we have, the senior team we have. They're just such a great bunch of boys. Like you couldn't ask for more from yeah. them. Yeah. And you know, if other teams have been through what we've been through, you know, they'd be gone. Like and we'd be, you know, yeah. middle in our team. But these boys are serious and. Just, I suppose it's just playing with them, our senior team at the minute. Yeah. I'm really happy with it. Like, you think, uh, for me, uh, and when I thought of the question, the first thing that came to mind like, was that Salt Hill comeback out in left and right. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. a couple of goals. And I was videoing, and you got, you know, you're not to Joe Lowry just yeah. decided that in a moment in time he decided, do you know what? I'm it's, winning this game. I've, I've yeah. decided this game isn't over, yeah. and we're going to win it. Yeah. Just took off, ran around, knocked mm. in the squid, bang. Yeah. And just the crowd. Yeah. God, like, and yeah. The I should do. Remember, I remember when uh, was it that goal? Yeah, that Joe's goal because we scored a goal before that. Adam McConnell put in a high ball. And I just yes. chanced it, went in, and just slapped it in. Yeah. And then with that goal went in, whatever way I turned, I remember seeing someone like three or four. Just, there wasn't many because most of the two people had left at half time. They had like there wasn't many. There was only about ten people two left because we were eight points down. And uh, I mean, there was just five or six people, and they just went. Stone mad, like, yeah, it was like something you see in the parish. Like, oh, it's brilliant! And it it's just brilliant. caught my eye, and I was going, like, you don't have time to watch that because you're watching the next kick out, yeah, yeah, you're right, that was that was amazing. That was And even last year against my cullen in the stand. Oh yeah. We were kind of, however the seating arrangements oh, were, yeah. we were kind of forced down to kind of the far end. Mm. And there's a good pocket of people down there and uh, Gavin put a lot of pressure on our goalie. Yeah. And go, you know, got the goal in. Yeah. And it was a the sense of a comeback. But yeah. She and you, Max, like, and people oh, got yeah. two goals and we get those back I remember in, like. coming off, um, coming in for the water break, second one, and that crowd was just there. Yeah. And just the lift. That's right. Just the roar. Yeah. Like, if you ever get that, that roar, I, I don't think I ever, because the tune crowd aren't known to be, you know, loud like the country teams are. Oh, Rows and stuff, they yeah, but that roar that gave us some lift. Just but again, when I look back at that game, I think you know the, the, the opportunities we've missed out on, you know. So. I know, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was still it was just great memories, too. Like, um, 
I know you have a great rugby background. Yeah. Uh, I know with the way the GA have changed their season, mm. there'll be a lot more opportunity for young players to play mm. two codes. Mm. It's a very open-ended question, but do you have any advice about playing two codes? I'd, I'd strongly advise, like, up to a certain age. Okay. You know, like, for me, I played a lot of rugby until I was 18, 19. You know, and I was playing at a decent level as well. Mm. So then, I think, you know... If you want to be a really good, like if a young guy wants to play for Galway, he needs to decide very early, like at 15, you know, I'm picking football. Or if he wants to decide, I'm going to be really good at rugby or soccer, yeah. I think they need to decide quite early. Very few people are really good. They can be good at both, but not really good at both. Okay. So I would definitely advise kids to tap into rugby, because you learn a lot from rugby than football. You will learn a lot from football than rugby, yes. you know, or soccer, or whatever your other sport is. Yes. But... There'll come a stage when you have to realise, you know, what am I going to be really good at here? Is it football? Do I want to put all my eggs in that basket? Or So I would up to a certain age encourage yeah. good. Good the sport. Good, yeah. I think the new seasons will allow that. And, you know, and maybe the GA in the past have been greedy. You know, they have, been they have the season, whole season, season whole year. Long, like January to October was definitely a football yeah, season. Was, yeah. And now mm. it's a bit more moderate and it's better for everyone. It's good and on all courts, like, because the town needs all courts. Oh, it yeah. needs all these clubs. It does, yeah. So we, you know, and hopefully we can support one another and keep building on a, on a good football, a good sporting um, hierarchy. Let's see, um, the club for us. Yeah, the next one is something, I suppose, I came into adult football in the 90s, mm. and it was kind of sink or swim. You know, the, 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 we didn't really have the juvenile structures and coaches mm. and, and all this goodwill that's following our young players coming up now at the moment, and such application by adult coaches. What's... What do you see as a good pathway for young players coming through? I know John McGrath and, and Dara here and mm. Joel, a lot of good people have kind of put in good work to put a document together, but mm. without referring to that, mm. in, in past seasons, what, what do you think would help young players to come, come in? I think, honestly, like I, I see it now, the, when a young lad comes from minor into senior, you know, he's expected yeah. to make our senior team in, in a year or two, and our senior team is so strong. It's so... Pictures there. Uh, so, I was yeah. just asking uh, Jamie there about a pathway into adult football, um, mm. what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think um, guys that are coming from minor to senior are expected to make senior within two years, and if they're not, then people are asking questions, how come you're not playing seniors, you, you know? Yeah. But our senior team is so strong, like, it takes a lot of them, you look at Brian O'Donnell, and, who started off playing junior B and junior A and then senior, I think the club need to make our second team. You know, rather than calling it our junior A team, maybe call it our development team, like what the rugby do. Yes. And, you, you know, when you come from minor, you go into our development team. Yeah. And then, you know, you, you get loads of game time there. And then you come into our senior setup. And I think that's the way that we should go. And because, it, you know, there's very rarely now a minor come from minor to senior because our mm -hmm. senior team is very strong. So, like, what are they going to do? Sit in the bench for a year and then after two years... I think they're better off playing as much football as they can, but if we can create a buzz about our second team and development, get good coaches in to develop these guys into senior path, yeah. uh, I think that's the way forward to, yeah. to get everyone going. Definitely, there's a, there's a big body work there as well, and even the styles of play, that all the teams are kind of similar styles as well, Yeah, they can migrate across. Like, exactly, it's, yeah. it's a massive step up, because you come from minor, you're training twice a week, you know, and there's not much gym work. You come into the senior setup, you're training twice, Three times a week, at, you know, at yeah. a high intensity. You have two gym sessions. You're asked to change your diet. Yeah. You're asked to get right sleep. It's a massive change for a young lad. And when he realised, I'm doing this for a year and I'm not going anywhere. It's not that he's not going anywhere. You know, it's, it's four year to get into the, a good senior side. You know. Yes. And I think prime examples of that is Brian O'Donnell, Rory O'Connor. Yeah. You know, guys who you know struggle and people are asking questions about them, but now they're our best players in the game. Yeah. Yeah. They've made the hard yards. Yeah. And, uh, the, the, the gains. Um, yeah, that, that's kind of kind of it. Oh yeah, that last question, uh, and this kind of goes back to the juvenile structures. Well, I was forever and always a cornerback, and you know, and heaven forbid I'd go wing back maybe. <laughs> I think Alan Flynn threw me in wing forward in one swing oil game just to because I travelled out. He said, "Put him up number twelve, like you know." But am I right thinking you've played from number two to number fifteen? Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah, I've yeah. seen you. Yeah, set up. Yeah, yeah. So, so what's your advice about young guys out there now? And they think they've been pigeonholed into a position, or they assume they have to play a certain position because of their physique or whatever else. How do you advise a guy to say to a coach, "Look, I want to try this. I want mm -hmm. to try here." Like, uh, 
Firstly, it depends on your size. If you're six foot two, you're not going to be stuck on her back. You know. Yeah. That's one, you know one. But most players now are you know they're agile and they're able to mobility. But I think you just have to be open minded and not do what you want to do, but what what's best for the team. You know, like, I've been asked to play cornerback when I've always wanted to play wing-back. I've been asked to play full forward when I've always wanted to be centre forward. Or if it was up to me, I would be playing five my whole life, you know. Right, okay. But Alan Flynn came in and he said, I need a full forward, grand. I need a cornerback, grand. I need, you know. And, you know, we ask that now of our senior players. We have lads in cornerback now that are want to play halfback. Yes. But, you know, what's, what's, when we sit down with them, listen, this is your role for the team, and if a lad can't understand that, then maybe a team sport isn't for him. Yeah. You know, you have to think of what's what's the bigger picture here. Right. You know, if you have a guy who's I'm I'm a centre forward and only centre forward. You know, and the coach and the other players are thinking, no, we can move this guy inside or Cormac McAlter, prime example last year, only wanted to play number ten all year, right? right? And he'll tell you this, and we war over. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely, no, you're going inside. I don't want to play inside. You're going to, I don't want to play inside. He went inside yeah. and he looked his best year ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He won, like, everything he kicked. Season, was he? Huh? Was he on the season, the team of the year. Team yeah, year, yeah. It's first time. I don't know what he kicked, but everything he kicked went over the bar. Yeah. And we knew that. You know, like, we had number 10s that would run up and down all day do the donkey work. We didn't want Cormac doing that. Yeah. We just wanted him inside. Brilliant. And, uh, yeah, so good. Good example. Good Cormac's a prime example of that. So we, we, we finished it there on the high and. Uh, Obviously, I'd like to congratulate yourself and Nidel on your recent addition, oh, which, is, which is great. And uh, thank you again for coming out. No problem. Um, and as it. Dara said, we'll have Carol out Thursday night, and um, that'll be session 14 of 16. And then, lads, won't be long before you're back on the pitch, uh, back on the hard side. Yeah.